When my mother lay in the small front room of the weatherboard house in which we lived, awaiting the arrival of the midwife to deliver me, she could see tall gums tossing in the wind, and a green hill, and cloud shadows racing across paddocks. And she said to my father, "It will be a sun. It's a man's day." And my father said, "I'll make him a bushman and a runner. By God, I will." Person's fully in the yard too. She came in today. What's she like? Oh, we'll handle her after we've had a cover. Hmm. Mama, what's in the oven? Leg a lamb for tomorrow, and I'm making a batch of scones. I'll wear my long dress for picnic tomorrow, Dad. Mum said I could. I think we might all get spruced up a bit tomorrow. You bet we will. Do you know what your cocky did? Took all the pegs off Mrs. Barker's washing line. What with the wind yesterday, all her sheets were blown into the dust. The cocky's a right old menace. Well, she wants you to keep him in his cage. He's got to have his fly around the trees. <laughs> Will you keep an eye on him? You going to clean his cage today? No, I'm helping Dad with the new horse. Alan, he's your pet. I'm not going to do it all the time. <laughs> No, 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 you're just going after him. He'll be off to the paddock. Bastard! Ah, uh, come on. Let's finish our cup up first. Easy, 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 easy. Woo. You're not angry with him, are you, Dad? No, son. No, that's my own fault. He's a good horse. Good strong bones. Only a daylight under him, see? Easy, easy, easy. Good boy, good boy. Go on. Go on. Go on. Thanks, man. The race tomorrow, Dad. Will I have to start out front? Well, you're smaller than the other blokes. I'm bigger than I was last year. <laughs> but they're grown too. Yeah, I tell you what, we'll have a trial run. Now, there's the fence. When I shout bang, you go for it. Right, uh, Just take my shoes off. And just take your time. Relax. And remember three things. You take off the moment that pistol goes, you run hard, and you don't look back. You look back, you're done for, Alan. Right. Ready, steady, go! Go on, go on! on that left boot's better than the one on the right. Funny, that. It's gonna go before the other one. Alan's gonna win that race. 
this tomorrow. He's gaining, Dad. Time to deal with him. Come on. Come on. I got him licked, son. Can't he swear? And him an elder of the church. We know all about hell and damnation. Stands to reason. A race. What time's the boys' race, Miss Pringle? Oh, after the egg and spoon race for the girls. And when's that? Well, you'd better ask Mr. McPherson. He comes now. Died, he was as long in the tooth as I am. Now, you remember that leg of mutton Joe's father gave us? Now, that was a lovely piece of meat if ever I saw one. A sheep ought to be slaughtered on a full stomach, fresh from grass. That's what me dad always says. Oh, well, you can't have them hanging around for a few days and expect them not to lose condition. And it stands to reason. They get jammed in the yards. And knocked about by the dogs. Those dogs will bruise the hell out of them. There, son. You better have a bit. Keep your strength up. I don't care if he wins or not. Oh, we're all right. There you see. Hello. Here she comes. Doesn't she look a treat? Mmm, what a lovely hat. You wait till it's a breath of wind. Not that I'd mind if she was whisked away. Oh, Bill, what a thing to say about Mrs Carruthers. Well, she'd be happy about it, I reckon. Why? Now, haven't you heard her in church singing Nearer My God to Thee? She'd be pretty near then, wouldn't she? <laughs> She's got quite a good voice. Ah, uh, it's a good voice, I'll grant you that. It's very loud. Yeah, she tags along behind the congregation at the start of the end, and then pips us all on the post at the finish. <laughs> 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 Any more girls? Yeah, Mary, what about you? No. Go on, have a go, no. girl. Oh, in a long skirt, have a heart. Ready? Steady? Go! <laughs> Race. Come along, boys. All the boys in the Come on, race. son. I'll lead you in. Come along, <laughs> Mary and I'll be watching, Alan. You can win it. That's the shot. Up to the top. All right, all your taller lads over here. Up this end and the shorter lads down there. 
How are you, Peter? Never better. Five to four the field. Ah, is he going to jib today? No, he's raring to go, aren't you, son? I tell you what, Bill, just slip him in there, say, beside Bruce. He should have a fair chance from there. Thanks. Come on, son. Come here. Robert. Mr. Marshall. Bob. Mr. Martin. Bruce. Yeah, now settle down, son. Prancing horse never wins, son. Yeah. Hey, you just take off the moment that gun goes back. I'll get there as quick as anything. Well, you just remember what I said. You keep your eye on that tape and don't look back. Whatever you do, don't look back. I'll get a prize when I win. Yes, you will. Okay, now that pistol will go off presently. Get ready. Good luck, boys. You three lads here at the end. Back one yard, please. Come along. Back one yard. Mary. On your marks. Get set. Ready, Alan. Run! 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 Winner of the junior boys race is Freddie Hawk. Well done! Well done, Freddie! Very good! That's my rag, son. Why didn't you take off when the gun went off? You looked back at the other boys, didn't you? I had to wait for him to race him. Can't win races on my own. Make a runner out of you, son. Come on, have your tea. Hunger will come with eating. Go on, you wash your hands. You seen your pets yet? Yeah? Hello, Philly's got an appetite. Like she hasn't been fed for days. <laughs> Carter's going to bring me over another horse on Monday. Did you see that picture you had painted on the buggy? Yes, it's nice. I thought I might paint one on the brake. A bucking horse, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, come on, son, stop your fretting. Thanks, Mum. I shouldn't have called out to you. It was me that got you muddled. You ran well enough once you got started. He's got a fever. Go on, off to bed. Don't you want your dinner? You lie and have a rest, love. I'll tuck you when I've finished here. been a bit much for him today. You'll be right as rain tomorrow. better. Is it measles? No, Mrs. Marshall. I can say with confidence it isn't that. You say he's been complaining about a feeling of pins and needles in his legs. Yes. Hmm. Well, Doctor, have you fixed him up? I'd like a word with you, Mr. Marshall. Uh, one tablespoon three times a day. It'll help the aches and pains. All mm. right. I'd like to call in a colleague of mine from Melbourne for consultation. What for? I want you to understand. I'm not quite certain. You've got some idea. 
Look, you give it to us straight. There's no point beating around the bush. Yeah, nothing worse than not knowing, Doctor. Well, there's a possibility the boy has contracted poliomyelitis. Infantile paralysis. Paralysis? Still, we'll have to wait and hear what Dr. Kelly has to say. He has treated numerous cases when there was an epidemic a few years ago in the city. But he's not lame. He can move all right. I'm not asserting he has the disease. You ask my opinion. A healthy kid like that, he's never got anything wrong with him. Why would he get a thing like that? No one can say. He'd be crippled, would he? Let's not leap to conclusions, Mr. Now, badly. Well, some children have recovered almost fully. It could be something else, couldn't it? Yes, but the prognosis is not good. What do you mean? He won't die, will he? Of course he won't die. Well, what do you say, Doctor? Mrs. Marshall, no one can say what will happen. It's in God's hands. I was the only victim at Tirala, and the people for miles around heard of my illness with a feeling of dread. Get out of the way, you children! Go on, get out of it! Steady, boy! Steady! Whoa! Whoa! If I read to any more, my voice will go on me. Did you mm. like the cocky air? Mrs. Barker's still got a washing on the line. I'm not game. Look who's here to see you, Alan. Oh, hello, Mr. McPherson. Good day, Mr. McPherson. And a very good day to you, young man. And how are you feeling? All right. That filly's ready in the yard if you want to try her out. Oh, yeah? How's she going? Oh, you'll have no trouble with her. She's quiet because she's got no fear. <laughs> Treat them right when they're young and they're good for life. Have you come to collect her? I that I have some. She's beautiful. Never mind, there'll be other horses, Alan. You should have come to church on Sunday. Uh, Reverend Robinson said prayers for your boy. We had a uh, full attendance. Yeah, it's a bit late offering a prayers for him now. Well, God works in mysterious ways. I suppose your legs are hurting? No, they feel dead. Do they? But Mrs. Barker said you had a lot of pain. Well, that was previous. And he's all right otherwise, is he? How do you mean? Well, I thought maybe the brain. His brain's as good as yours or mine. Probably better. Yeah, there. Yeah. One day bright as a button and the next felt like a polite stare. Well, if it's God's will, the back was made for the burden. That's what they say. Yeah, well, his back was made for any burden. And this won't be a burden either. If you're looking for burdens, that's the place to find them. Come on. Aye. All right. Mary? Yes? Do you think he thinks God made me sick? Dad's talked to the doctors. They say there was a germ just floating past you in the air when you were breathing in. That's what made you sick. If you'd breathed out that time, you'd be fine. And was it God who made me breathe in? Nah, he wouldn't be so mean. Good morning, Mr. Marshall. Morning, Doctor. Dr. Crawford's been in touch with the doctor down in Melbourne. And? I'm afraid Alan's legs have contracted rather badly. Would it help if I rubbed them with a mixture of brandy and olive oil? The school teacher's wife said it worked wonders for her brother. He had rheumatism. Well, it can't do any harm. Still, my colleague and I have discussed the matter. And the fact is that we have to straighten these legs of Alan's. 
There's only one thing we can do. We must force them down. Yes, the legs must be forced down. Forced? The question is how. The best way, I think, would be to lay him on a table, say your kitchen table each morning, and press your weight on his knees till they straighten. The legs must be pressed flat on the table, say, three times. Yes, three times would be enough, I should think. Say two on the first day. Will it hurt very much? You're going to need all your courage. What do you think? It's good. All right. Well, we'll paint him on the break and make him a chestnut. Why don't you paint one like the picture in the kitchen? They're Arabs. Yeah, but not pure Arabs, though, Alan. You have a good look at their fetlocks. Anyway, mightn't be an Arab. He's a stock horse. Nothing wrong with that. His buck looks a bit funny. Yeah, well, it's because it's his first buck. Hasn't had a chance to get into his stride yet. Best do his legs again. No! No! Oh, no. It won't do any good or no, it won't. It won't. It's got to be done. That's what the doctor ordered. You said he doesn't know anything. That's what you said. Yeah, well, it sounds like the right thing to do. Mm. Well, come on, son. You've got to give it a chance. He said it's either that or you're going to have to go into hospital. Mm. Oh, Alan, look, we must try, son. You get your legs straight and you can run and ride a horse again. It's got wind goals here. I think they're beautiful. Yeah, they are. Ah! Ah! Horses! 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 <laughs> Dad's got to feed the horses. It's a long way home. Matron says we can bring you some extra food and some eggs. So we'll be back soon. Tomorrow? As soon as we can, I promise. You all right, son? You want to go home? So do we all. So do we all. Wait, what's your name, son? Alan. Alan Marshall. Alan, eh? And what's wrong with you, Alan? Uh, I got infantile paralysis. Infantile paralysis, eh? Go on. Well, that's murder now. That's a bloody murder, that is. How long have you been sick? Three months. Hey, Daddy, you hear what this boy's got? Infantile paralysis. I got paralysis. In both me legs. Sure, but not infantile. I'll be right. I'll walk again. Of course you will. 
Hey, nurse, we've got a new patient. I know. How are you, Alan? We won't tuck you in too tight, will we now? My word. You're as handsome as your father. Well, Daddy, it's time for your bath. No, not again. Come along. The Eskimos don't have bars, and you couldn't kill him with an axe. You ever heard of McDonald Brothers windmills? Well, they are the best. Does Mr. McDonald and his brother make them? That's right. I'm the original McDonald. Angus McDonald, that's me. And uh, that over there, that's Mick Buck. <laughs> What's your old man do, Alan? He breaks in horses. He's easy, the best rider in Torella. Mm, his shoe dress is flashing off. I thought he was right out of a buck jump show. How are we today? Oh, we're up for... That's good. What's wrong with your arm, Mr. Burke? Oh, you tell me. See, there I was, heaving bags of wheat, and all of a sudden it goes on me. That just shows you, you never know what's wrong with you till it comes on your sudden leg. Well? Up a bit. Oh, no. Oh, cheer up. We'd all miss you if you left. Oh, it's no joking matter. I've got a business to run, you know. I've got a pony. Her name's Kate. She's a bit eunuched, but she's honest. Well, that's what counts. Never mind. You'll soon get to like it here. Hey, you're a lucky boy. She never looks after us like that. Hey, is there ever a chance of you falling in love with me? Oh, you're a naughty man. What did your wife say if she heard you talking like that? <coughs> <coughs> What's the matter, Daddy? Got your money of that swap? No, you haven't. It's that squirty thing you used to me. All that water can't be good for you. Come on, you're not dead yet, are you? No, but I soon will be, you mark my words. <coughs> I'm waterlogged to death. <coughs> and bless my father and my mother and Mary and my pony and make sure she doesn't get caught in the fence again and look after the possum and the cat and see that the cocky doesn't get in her trouble and gets hit with sticks and that Meg gets her puppies all right. And don't let her die till I'm growing up, because I don't think I could bear it. And please let me go home soon, and don't let anybody die in my family until I'm a man. And I promise I'll be good ever after. Amen. Hand out your eggs. Who's having eggs for breakfast? Would you like an egg, son? No. Go on, have one on me, seeing it's your first day. All right. Here, write your name on it with that. Breakfast here is not much. We just eat it to keep alive, you know. And uh, did you have a good night now, Angus? Oh, no, I had that pain again. Uh, there is none feels the pain like yourself. That's what I always say. Uh, could, could you let me have an egg? All right. Well, make, make it two. I'll pay you back next week when the old woman comes to visit. But she mightn't bring you any. No, oh, she mightn't at that. You know, it is a funny thing, but there's never a man married a woman as good as his mother. I've seen it scores of times. No, you hang on to that. No, oh, women today, they're all the same. Anyone will tell you that. Here, you take a look inside my old mother's pantry back home now. Hell, a mouse couldn't have pushed his way through all the... Jars of pickles and jams and bottles of preserves and hot beer. And all made with their own two hands, mate. But you ask a woman today to make you a pot of jam. <laughs> ah, the wife will bring in the eggs, sure enough. Uh, I make it two, for I'm devilish hungry this morning, and that's a fact. Ah, Nuss, here's three eggs. One for me, two for Mick, and the lad's got one too. Oh. Hey, I hear the Blanche family's back in town. The posters are up everywhere. Did you see them when they were here last year? No, I believe they're wonderful. Oh, they are. Yeah, there was a bloke with them. He played 
She wore a wreath of roses on beer bottles. And it fair brought the tears to your eyes, so it didn't, that's a fact. Would you like to go and see them, Nuss? Oh. Well, I'll shout you if you like. Would you? Oh, go on. All right. You can go and see them and then come back and tell us all about it. Be as good as going ourselves, would it, Alan? Oh, all right. Thanks, Mr. MacDonald, very much. Trot, trot, trot. Mind you, Peter, he's well looked after there. The nurses are all right. Come on. Come on. There's some fine shafters among them. But they're shot all wrong. Come on, trot. And he's got good men around him. Come on. Come on. How long will he have to stay? Well, after the operation, the bone will have to knit. And they don't know how long it'll take. The doctor said the circulation in the leg's poor. So I reckon it's going to be quite a while. Come on. Come on. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come here. Come here. Good boy. We'll take a couple of jars of the jam to Alan in the hospital. We all miss you and hope you'll be back soon. The cocky is all right. I keep an eye on him when I let him out, but it's not easy. The possum's fine and likes his apples, and I've given Kate a brush too. There's not much feed in the paddocks now, so Dad's given her some chaff so that she's in good nick when you come home. Reckons he can make up to his maker at the last minute. I don't know. No, I myself. Well, there's no one can say I've neglected the faith. Well, not often I haven't. I go to Sunday school. Mum always makes me. Hmm. Uh, there was my old mother now, God bless her. Fine woman never lived, and that's a fact. I'd say to her on a fine morning, God is good, Mum, I'd say. Ah, yes. But the devil ain't bad, Mick, she'd say. Well, they don't breed them that way now. Why do you take so long to say your prayers? Got to ask a lot of things. What sort of things? Come on, you can tell me. We're mates. Well... You see, I've got to pray for Mum and Dad, for Mary, and for Meg, that's my dog, and for all of the other dogs, and for the possum and the cockatoo, and for all of the horses. And I've got to pray so that God makes me good so I can go home before Christmas. <laughs> you haven't left anything out, have you? You've asked him for the lot. God will think a hell of a lot of you by the time he's listened to all that. What sort of chap do you think God is? I don't know. I suppose he's very old and real big and he's sort of in a white sheet. You know, like an Arab. When I was a kid, I used to think he had a long white beard and a big black patch over one eye. That's from the larrikins throwing stones, my mother used to say. She always spoke in Gaelic. I used to imagine him as being a stooped old man surrounded by old women speaking Gaelic and doing their knitting. I couldn't imagine him doing anything without first consulting Mother. Did your mother ever smack you? Oh, no, no. She never ever used to smack us kids. But she was very severe on God. Hey, don't you listen to him, boy. That's all right. I won't destroy his faith. He'll work it out for himself when he becomes a man. Dr. Robertson. Morning, Daddy. How are you? Oh, my heart's as dead as mutton in my guts. I reckon I should be drenched. Oh, well, well. Do you think a dose of salts would fix me? Yes, I'm sure it would. I'll get Nurse to see that. Hello, Alan. Let's have a look at you. Just 
Roll over, if you would, so I can look at your back. Hmm. Severe curvature already. Muscles are affected badly. Yes, indeed. Just turn over, Alan, so I can look at your legs. That hurt? I have to realign the thigh. I'll shorten the sinews here. Lift the foot there, like that. I'll make the cut there. I'll do the realignment here. Right. Now that leg of yours straightened up in no time, Alan. You're a great boy. Doctor? Hmm? Do you drive an Abbott buggy? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Oh, they're the best. Does it have rubber wheels? Yes, it has. Why do you ask? Doesn't matter. Seems to have adjusted very well. Yes, he's quite a bright child there. <laughs> the nurses tell me he sings every morning. <laughs> Will you sing for me one day? <laughs> hey, what do you do up there? Come down, you bloody mongrel. There's nothing up there. Come on. I'll have a go at you. Steady now. You've had your bath, now go to sleep. Where did he come from? The police picked him up. He's been on the booze for weeks. Hey, what's that? It's moved. It's a chair. You're all right. It's a wife. What's the matter with him? Oh, he's got the DTs. He's you seeing mind. things. Oh, he'll be all right come tomorrow. On. Put him up. I'll murder now. you. I'll murder you, you bloody mongrels. White caps and your silly smells. It all stinks. Get out. Hey, sister. Look what I got here. Look. It's a freckle. Go to sleep. It's moving. No, it's not. Shh. Go to sleep. Wake up all the others. Come on, settle down now. There's nothing to be frightened of. Now? Oh, he's probably still seeing things. He kept me awake all night, the cow. Oh, did you sleep? All right. I had a hell of a night. Hey, so did I. I rolled over on my bad arm. Still, I'd swap my arm for his guts any day. At least he had a hell of a good time getting crook. Oh! Hey, you're done for, brother. Be pushing up daisies tomorrow. <laughs> you don't say things like that. You'll frighten him after death. Now? Settle down. Yeah, you try and make a boat for it, they'll strap you down. I'm good. I'm really good. That's the spirit. Do you want an egg? The lad wants to know if you'd like an egg. Yeah, I'll have one, yeah. I've, I've got to keep up my strength. Yeah, die. He'll have one. Shove it in. Here, child. How's your poor brother? Still in hospital? I have a little present for him. Peter. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mrs. Carruthers. It'll help him while away the time. 
and tell him we all pray for him. You're a good girl, Mary. All right, Peter. Walk on. Morning, Nuss. Well, how did you get on? Oh, morning, Mr. MacDonald. It was beaut. Uh, did you see the Blanche family? My word, I did. We had a second front seat. Yeah, they like good gang guttle. Oh, it was wonderful. Packed to the doors, and the man who took the tickets had a black cape on lined with red. Hey, well, that'd be old man Blanche. Trust him to be hanging round the do. <laughs> he wasn't old. Yeah, well, his son, then. It's all the same. Did the little fella play she wore a wreath of roses on the beer bottles again? No, he played Home Sweet Home this time. Did they sing any good songs? Did they sing any Scottish songs? No, none of those. Oh, but there was this man, you'd scream at him. He played the hobnail boots that my father wore. He had us in fits. Oh, and then, then there was this Swiss man, all dressed up like a Swiss and everything, and he yodeled. What's yodeled? Oh, that's a man who can sing up high like. I knew a boy in Bendigo once. He was tall and everything, this boy, and I don't care what anyone says. He could yodel as good as any Swiss. I went with him and... I could listen to him all night. Oh, I loved last night, but no one could sing as good as my bird. I don't care what anyone says. Aye, that's right. Now, don't you crease these, because Matron's just started her rounds. You're my boy, aren't you? Hey, I could do with a little of that myself. I'm still a child at heart. You're a bad man. Aye, uh, well, I'm that too. Well, there's no time for good men at all, and the girls don't like him either. They do so. No, they're like kids. Hey, my sister's kids, you know, when they do anything wrong, their mother always says to them, show sure you're grown up just to be like your Uncle Mick. <laughs> and he think I'm the best bloody uncle of the lot. <laughs> you mustn't swear like that. <laughs> no, I mustn't. You're right. Well, good morning, Matron. Good morning, Burke. And how are you this morning? Ooh, fine, fine. You know, the shoulder's a bit crooked, but it's, uh, it's coming along, I think. Uh, I, I can't lift it properly yet, but would that be anything serious, like? No, no, doctor's quite satisfied. And how's my brave little man today? You still haven't sung for me, have you? You might grow up to be a singer one day. Now, wouldn't that be lovely? Now, tomorrow you're going to go to sleep and when you wake up, your day will be in a nice white cocoon. The operation scheduled for 10.30. Sister will do the prep. Go to sleep. They'll give you an anaesthetic. What's that? Oh, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's just something you breathe in so you can go to sleep. Aye, after tomorrow everything will be all right. And you'll be as good as new. Will I break my leg? Oh, I'll blast it anyway. Donald. I'd like to kiss you, but there are too many looking, so we'll pretend we have. Did you bring plenty of eggs? Well, I brought lots. He hands them out like a buff Orpington. <laughs> There's a man over there, and he's real poor. And he hasn't got any eggs. And when he looks at a chair, it moves. I brought you something else. What is it? Let me see. Ah, please. Please. Mrs. Carruthers sent it to you. We haven't opened it. We've been waiting. We can't wait to, to see what's in it. What, how did she bring it? Did she come up to the house? No, she drove up and handed it to Mary and said it was for a sick little brother. Oh, oh look at the face you're making. Here, give it to me. I'll cut it. Oh, oh, there's a knife in my locker. Thanks. Where's Dad? Yes, he's coming. Oh, there you are. Now you'll be able to build your own windmills. 
When Mrs. Carruthers gave it to Mary, did she touch it? I don't know. Have a word with Matron. No oh, yes. Good. Yes, hold it. Clutch it. Hey, Mick. Go over there and help Mrs. Marshall find the nurse. It's one of Mick's pups. Pick up the bunch. Call it out. Um, we have to prepare him for the operation now. Can he just have five minutes? 